Hi you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker and welcome to Show and Tell number 79. Woohoo! I hope you guys have had a great week. Mine's been a little uh, crazy. I've had a lot of messages this week, a lot to respond to. I got out and did a lot of stuff this week, a lot of little things. And unfortunately, I think next week's going to be a, very much the same. <laughs> it's just going to be a lot of little stuff for a few days. Excuse me. I just ate lunch. Sorry about that. Um, my glasses are fogging. It's so weird. When I'm upstairs running around and stuff, when I sit down, my glasses don't fog. Now, they'll fog, you know, going in and out of buildings, homes, things like that. But, like, in the house, they never fog. But almost every single time I sit down to film, they fog. I don't know why. I don't run around any more pre-filming than I do just, like, housekeeping stuff. But they definitely fog up a lot <laughs> when I sit down to film. Anyway. Um, what else happened this week that was even vaguely, I don't think anything really happened this week. It's been a very quiet week in our house. It's been a very quiet week for our neighborhood too. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Um, I did get some crafting done. I have some sorting of stamps I need to be doing, but keep postponing. I've got some minor organization stuff I really ought to be working on, um, like with my paper crafting stuff. And I just don't feel like dealing with that. So I have a ring of stamps sitting in the floor that are kind of sorted by type and that's where they're going to sit probably until next week. I have other things I've been wanting to do and like, I've been very invested in my projects of late, so I can't, can't complain too much. So I do have before we get on to finished objects, if you follow me on Instagram, that would be the elephant in the room. Um, funny story. So I've never worked with Flicka before. And I do have a couple balls of comfy cotton up there, but I haven't worked with those either. <clears throat> I made, so I, you know, I've talked about this before, where if I make a big project and I've got half a ball left, I'll just go ahead and make something with those scraps so I don't have, you know, little scrap balls accumulating en masse. So this was one of those yarns where I really enjoyed working with it. I had a lot of fun working with it. Um, we'll get to the conversation with the hook and stuff here in a minute, but um, I decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead now that the big item's done see what I can make. <clears throat> One of the things I made was a coaster or like a little dish scrubby or a face scrubby. It's just a granny stitch round. They were in the wash yesterday to do a wash test because I wanted to know, did I need to steam this to make the sleeves not bell so much? So this is just a rectangle. Um, and I want to see like, the seam feels a little bit tight, not super tight. I mean, there's still stretch and give, but it feels a little tight. So it makes it look like the sleeves are belling. And um, that's not what I was wanting. I really wanted something that's going to lay flat to my arm when I have my arms down. Put it in the washer, ran it through the dryer because the care on this says it's machine washable, machine dryable. It vanished. I mean, I put it in the washer. I put it in the dryer. I took the clothes out of the dryer and it's gone. I'm willing to bet it is in the pockets of a pair of pants somewhere. I would assume that's probably where it ended up. But I didn't see it. So I've got to explain to my husband, keep an eye out for a little face scrubby crocheted round thing that looks kind of like this. Because... We got one missing. Um, so yeah, this is my big finished object for the week. And you can, I mean, it's so weird. Because when I, 
when you see it full on, you can tell that's just a seamed rectangle. But every time I put my arm down, it bells. It doesn't pull, it doesn't drape to the body. It like sticks out, but the fabric's not super dense, stand up on your own. I mean, it's flexible. I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. Um, so this is the crochet cabana top, heavily altered by Sorella. I changed the number of stitches I did. I changed the measurements and dimensions that I did. I did go, well, here, first off, here's the picture of me wearing it. I'm sorry it's a bad picture. I don't have a photographer to take pictures for me, and it would actually probably look worse if I had my husband take that picture. Um, <laughs> he's not very good at, like, you know, you can take the picture from up instead of down. Um, you know, little things like that. Um, not hyper flattering photography, and about half the time, like, it's cattywampus. So, until I figure out a better way to take pictures of myself wearing sweaters, bathroom mirror is what we get. At least I get a full-size mirror that doesn't have, you know, like the big silvering marks like my last one. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can see the belling and stuff even in that picture. It's pretty bad. It's not unattractive. It doesn't make the sweater unwearable or anything, but... It's pretty obvious. <clears throat> but yeah, so I did go, I decreased two stitches for my dream comfort fit for this. I know it looks like super skin tight in the pictures. It's really not. I have about two and a half inches of ease on each side. I mean, I've got plenty of ease in the sweater. It's, um, cotton stretches. <laughs> and every time I've made a cotton sweater or a cotton blend sweater, I've gone from my perfect fit to potato sack and about three or four wearings. So I decreased a further two stitches from I fell in between two sizes on this pattern. So I actually met in the middle of those stitches, then decreased two more stitches for the body to make up for where we're going to get some stretch and reshaping in it. I uh, followed the form of the pattern more or less. I by sight gauged how deep I wanted my sleeves. Um, so my underarm is actually way up here. This is where my seam is. So I've got you know, plenty of ease throughout the sleeve, but I didn't want it to be too huge down here because I didn't want something gapey. And yeah, so I took into account my preferences. This is a super easy pattern shape to alter, so don't be afraid to alter it. Um, if you look at the pattern, you'll see why this is so easy to change for your fit. But it is heavily altered. Um, yes, and I do have a tan <laughs> tank top on with it. Uh, this would be super cute. Yeah, with the if I had left the seam maybe out to here, once again, two or three stitches on either side. And let it hit at the outer part of my shoulder instead of right at the collar bone shoulder join. Um, but that's where I wanted it. Once again, with stretch, I'm worried that that's going to start falling off my shoulders anyway. So planned ahead this time. I'm rather proud of myself because normally I just end up really disappointed. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, I try to use up my scraps as I go. This isn't something that can go in like a scrap gain or anything. So I made a really cute little ear warmer. I was actually thinking with the cotton. I don't, I don't even know if that turned, pulled up the knot there. I was actually thinking with the cotton content, this would be really good for my morning walks. Because as I've mentioned before, even when it's 
cold here. The humidity is generally so high, you, you stay moist. <laughs> there's no, um, there's no relief from the humidity here. Uh, Columbia was definitely worse than Charlotte is, but still it's, um, a little stifling. Um, I was explaining Vermont at 32 degrees actually feels warmer than humid southern days at 32 degrees because the humidity gets into your bones and makes it feel colder. Um, just like it makes it feel hotter in the summertime, it tends to make it feel colder in the wintertime. And 32 in Vermont, I was fine with like a lined jacket. <laughs> Uh, but we were like in the mountains, so it's very crisp, very cool, um, but beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But yeah, mm, I can't do this with my hairpin things. But yeah, it fits perfectly over my ears. It should keep the cold air out from my ear canal. Um, I'm one of those people that when cold air hits my ear, it makes my ears hurt. It feels like my eardrum is like being poked. So hopefully that'll offer me shielding from the temperature and cold air, but breathe enough to where any body moisture has a place to go. <laughs> there, there's no polite way to say that. I sweat. I sweat. And uh, yeah. I didn't want acrylic. I do have some acrylic air warmers. I have used them like when it's um, the drier spring days. <clears throat> but if I'm going to continue trying to walk through the winter this year, like I have in the summer, I'm going to need something else. Ew. Um, yeah, so I did that. I did the scrubber that's gone missing. I've got my sweater. And then I made two heart ornaments on top of that. So those are my finished objects for the week. Well, finished crocheted objects. Very pleased with myself. Very surprised how far six balls of Flicka went. So if you got that kit from Mary Maxim, that's, uh, this was the August Mary Maxim kit. If you got that kit and did not want to make the blanket with the drawstring thing, um, it goes a long way. Just saying. Um, sweater, ear warmer, coaster scrubby thing, plus two heart ornaments. Kind of pleased with that overall. Was really pleased with how far it went. And I did enjoy working with it. I'm not a huge cotton person, but I thought I'd give it a shot because I do like polyester. Um, believe it or not, I do actually like polyester yarns. A lot of them are... Um, it, it still feels dry. It's not, um, it still dries your skin as you're working with it, kind of like cotton does and silk does, but it's not, um, sticky to me. Mm. I did want to mention, you guys know I love my Amore hooks. I adore these. I think these are the bee's knees. I'm not a plastic hook person. I think plastic is one of the worst hook types you could possibly have. It sticks to everything. It slows you down. You can't easily rotate your hook through your work. But this was done using a K hook, I believe. And I could have probably gotten away with like my old Ergo boy hooks. But couldn't find one, so I just used my Amore hook. These, I've mentioned it before, work so much better than expected. Now, definitely slower because it's cotton on plastic. It's a sticky fiber on a sticky hook. But I don't know if you guys can see the utter lack of seaming, burrs, any, any deviation there on that hook in its texture. It's a fairly smooth plastic. It is one you're going to have to clean to keep it gliding as well as possible. 
but the seam is, I mean, even just doing this, you can't feel where that seam is in the plastic. Um, I've, there's a vague shadow of it running under the head of the hook. I'm once again, really pleasantly surprised at the quality of the Amore hooks. I get asked, and I'm going to discuss this in another video coming up, but I get asked a lot what hooks I use because I talk so much about the Chao Goon needles. Um, but yeah, I, I am quite pleasantly surprised once again at just how well this hook works. I mean, I, I prefer the metal ones, but you got to do what you got to do when you get up to these bigger sizes. This one's my K, eight millimeter. Yeah, eight mil, that's an L, eight millimeter. Um, anything this large and beyond is going to be too heavy in metal. I'm not a massive fan of bamboo hooks. I prefer hardwood hooks if I use a wood hook. So even then at this size, we're getting to a beefy weight, which gets a little bit harder to use. But it did the job and I wasn't angry <laughs> like I thought I was going to be. I was really worried I was going to get frustrated with the plastic hook and the cotton yarn. But yeah, um, Saturday's video is going to be just a combination of how I do things hips. I don't know how else to put that. Um, I get... A lot of questions and some of those are going to be answered in that. So it's been a while since I've done a paper crafting update. Not because I haven't been paper crafting, but because I haven't done the finishing work on a lot of things. But I did want to share with you guys some of the Halloween cards I've been working on. And these, of course, you know, have my decorated washi tapes. Um, this is not a paper collection per se, uh, doodle bug, which is the manufacturer of these papers does collections every year. And after the season, sometimes like the next year, you'll start seeing these weird kits coming out that are bits and pieces of former collections. So these are actually using two of those. And it's got a couple of different collections in there. Some are, I keep forgetting there are actually three of this guy. Some are actually um, before Doodlebug got so cutie, cutesy. So the Doodlebug collections right now have like these like super cute little critters and in a minute you'll see like their little kids. I mean, they're just like super cutesy and adorable, but they used to have like kind of, I don't want to say it's like, it's a bad thing, but like a nineties aesthetic, um, like more like kids draw, um, off center wonky. That sounds so bad, but yeah, it's totally a 90s aesthetic thing. Kind of how you had like the, the goose thing. It's just, it's a, a visual that. <laughs> but this is definitely part of their newer stuff. This is actually before they got to the kids. Some of these have um, twine. I was watching... Just Crafts. She just put up, and I'll leave her link down below. She just put up a couple of Doodlebug 6x6, as many as I can get card things. And she was talking about how to use those supplies that you have a whole bunch of and make sure that, you know, if your goal is to use something, her tip was put it out with your stuff to use. So I finally went in there and I grabbed the butcher's twine that I have had in my stash forever in three years. I always forget that I have it and I have it in seasonal colors and a handful of, 
just regular things. So as I was coming through doing the inserts for all these, I started adding twine either to the inside or to the spine of the card. <laughs> I love how this turned out. I was so worried that was going to look too busy. I do wish I didn't have the washi tape. Here you go. This is from the older stuff that I said has a 90s aesthetic to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a really, really good tip for getting some of that used and getting it back out of my stash. This collection, um, it's like something carnival is actually the one of the ones that Just Crafts just, just did. So the cards that folded out in the 5x7, those were Call Me Crafty Owl sketches. <sighs> I really need to figure out how to like film these off my desk instead of holding them up like this. And that's a, the stamp inside of those is a, from May May Made It. That's also made me made it. Same, same one. Um, I can't remember. Trick or treat. Give me something good to eat is from something else. So this is um, that carnival collection too, I think. The cauldron is from an older, like 90s aesthetic kit. But like I took the stickers and used them all over the place. Keeping in the theme. I wish I scrapbooked more and had littles that I could have done that same kind of layout with that same concept because that was super cute. I want candy. I don't know. I think the Doodlebug collections are just the cutest. But yeah, so we have a Call Me Crafty Owl sketch. We have just some basic paper layering. Trying to, to make do. I'm starting with the cut-aparts. I see. 90s aesthetic. Tell me. That doesn't look like something. I mean, and it is from like probably 2005 maybe. Um, I'm kind of surprised some of these were being sold at all. Cause some, some of the things in this kit, these leftover kits were pretty old, but yeah, that's, that's my Halloween card so far. I haven't done a count. I've got another group of five by seven ones over there. Um, how are we on time? All right. So I'm not going to show you my whip. We'll just save that for next week. But I did want to tell you about this. So this is one of the new yarns from Hobby Lobby. I have already had four people send me emails or messages on Instagram asking me to review it and compare it to 100% Superwash Merino from like Independent Dyers, LYS, Knit Crate. And see what I think. Um, I'm going to tell you straight out of the gate, $14.99 plus your 40% coupon is an awfully good deal for what you're getting. Um, 100 grams, 200 or 420 yards. This one is a size one. My store also has some bulky weight that is pretty flippin' spectacular. I mean, it was really hard to not like buy everything. I will review that at a later date, but this is the one everybody's asking for. Um, recommended needle size is US size 2, hook D3. Um, this one is dark denim. Hand dyed yarns can have a slight color variation from skein to skein. There is a dye lot number, but there's also the disclaimer that even if it's in the same lot, you're going to have variation. This is called authentic hand dyed tonal dark denim. Um, I can tell you the quality of the yarn based on the spin and ply seems to be pretty comparable. Let's open this up a little bit. It 
is very soft. It seems to have a nice soft spring to the yarn. So first impressions, I'm going to go with, um, yeah, I am going to, I did double check with my husband. He did say he would wear a beanie hat out of this. So I do think I'm going to go ahead and do another sock head beanie. And I will get that started. I have a, um, I have been asked to test a project for somebody. So I'm going to work on that when I finish the other sweater I'm working on. And no, it's not my Geldy sweater that I was knitting a couple months ago. I started a whole new one. Um, but yeah, I will definitely give this a shot. We will see how it works up. We will see the quality of it. I will probably only do one project with this because I have a feeling there are going to be a lot of channels talking about this. So it will just be the one knit project, but I will let you know, you know, did I see any knots? Did I have any, um, now if this turns out to be a horrible hank and I do have, you know, like a hundred bajillion knots in it, there's splitting, pulling, tearing, broken plies. I will get a second hank and work another project with it. Um, but I don't think I'm going to have a problem with it. It seems to be awfully nice. The purple and pinks were awfully gorgeous. My store only had about a third of the section where these are going. And like I said, the spotted, speckled, bulky weight one looked phenomenal. <coughs> Sneak peek of what my whip is. That's my big, big whip right now. And it is in one of my Heaven's Peacemaker bags. I will leave Beth's channel link down below as well. I'm going to have a lot of sitting there typing and copying and pasting to do today. This is my Peanuts Halloween bag. Sorry, I, I keep holding things up like I normally do. My camera is further back than normal because I wanted to show you more of the sweater. Um, yeah. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. I have kept you on here way too long. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, a fantastic weekend, and I look forward to seeing you real soon. Bye, guys.